Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Friday, which means it's time for French strength facts about health, business, and overall success. In today's episode, we talk to performance coach Justin Franson. He's an athletic performance coach that has worked with amateur and professional athletes for over the past two decades. He saw his athletes break down from excessive levels of EMF from their smartwatches, wireless earbuds, and electric cards. He has tested hundreds of homes and clients. He also sells the grounding and Faraday bags for doctors, clinics throughout the country. The grounding bags are hand-mined crystals with moisture and magnetic properties to ground and repel EMFs, or for a deeper night's sleep. This is how mo- this is Mother Nature's way of protecting us from excess rollout man-made radiation, not a man-made device attempting to keep up with other man-made levels. Some interesting facts about Justin is that he absolutely loves serving, qigong, and also reading. Welcome to the Natural Podcast, Justin. Mihaila, thank you so much for having me. You are most welcome. So, you hitting up the surf, or is it too cold? Oh yeah, it's been flat for the last three weeks. So I still do some diving every weekend, like free diving and and paddling. So I stay in shape for when it gets good. (laughs) Nice, beautiful. That's amazing. And what's the latest book you've been reading? Because reading seems to be one of your hobbies. It is. My favorite one, which we're going to dive into right now, is Electric Body, Electric Health. uh, uh, Eileen McCusick is... She's uh, does tuning fork therapy and that system, her practitioners, they can do remote treatments are just fantastic. It's all resonance, healing, vibration, waveform technology, sound therapy. And so we're going to dive deep into that today. I am so excited. It's going to be an absolutely amazing, amazing podcast. But before we get into all of the EMF um, 5G, if buds, and so forth. How about we learn a little bit about you? Let's get to know you. What have been the key turning points in your life to get Justin to where he is now? Well, Mihaila, I, I was a performance coach uh, coming out of school, but uh, the reason I went that route is I was an athlete and I played tennis growing up and a few other sports, but that was my main one. I wanted to play at a collegiate division one level, which is the highest level you could play. And then see if I could go to the next level. I got injured and had a few nicks on my health along the way that didn't allow me to get there. And so I ended up writing a book on it, athleticism, whole body plus whole brain equals performance. And, uh, through that, uh, the last couple of decades, I've been working with the amateur and professional athletes on human performance. And more recently, about a decade ago, I started recognizing that EMF would be the biggest bio stressor uh, and environment and invisible bio stressor on our body. And so I started looking into how do we solve that challenge. And so it, it brought me to today because I do lots of nerve work, treat concussions, do nerve works on athletes because the nerves fire the muscles and the the EMF is a neurotoxin and it's an environmental toxin that we're all really uh, dealing with right now. Yeah. And I can imagine people listening and being like, you're a performance coach and you're worried about EMFs and 5G. That doesn't make any sense, but it will after this podcast that we dig into it, which is so exciting. So what got you actually interested? So you were always interested in sports and athletes and things like that as a young, as a young, um, as a young Justin growing up. Is that right? Definitely. So interested in sports, uh, you know, give, gifted athlete to what I thought I was, I had talent enough to go to that next level. Fortunately, I didn't make it. So <clears throat> wanted to help people get there and had a, you know, just uh, amazing mentors along the way to bring me to the, our program, our athleticism program. And what I saw was the, these athletes were breaking down from excess EMF. So guys would come in like endurance athletes, the strongest, fittest guys you've seen, their whole arm would go weak and they would wear in a smart smart watch and they just, you know, had it on for the last several months and they couldn't use that arm. So I I started 
in the trench experience putting these things together, driving Teslas, they're wearing earbuds, they had cell phones on them. I mean, it was just, they had so much EMF. I'm going, we have to solve this challenge because as a performance coach, the easiest thing you could do to make someone better is to get rid of the stressors in their life. So if something's hurting them, <laughs> okay, let's get rid of that. Well, if they're eating bad food, if they're drinking bad, something bad, you know, if they're not getting enough sleep, like get the stuff out of their life that's bad because you have physical stressors, you have biochemical, and then you have emotional. So emotional would be thoughts, feelings, emotions, stress. Physical would be too much exercise, too little or a big trauma. And then biochemical, food, drink, air, and, and what's in our air, what travels through plasma are waveforms, electricity, man-made electricity. So that was the one that wasn't being addressed. It was proliferating at the highest levels with the closest proximity. And so we addressed it. Yeah. Wow. That, that's an absolutely amazing niche to go into, especially for athletes. And I mean, if you want top performance and if you yourself want top performance, you see what athletes are doing because they're the ones that are just got it all right. Um, um, you know, sleep wise, training wise, food wise, and now even reducing the toxins like EMFs and so forth. But before we get into uh, what EMFs are, uh, what, what does optimal health um, coming from a um, performance coach like yourself look like? And what does success look like for you now? Well, optimal health is is really your, having your energy, your chi, your life force, super vibrant. And as Bruce Lipton would say, your health lies in your chi. So when I look at what health is, and it's definitely not a drug, it's definitely not a vaccine, it's definitely not a mask, it's definitely not being distanced from someone you love, it's definitely <laughs> not not smiling at someone. Okay, those things are the exact opposite, and it's definitely not fear. Health is smiling, nutrition, it's proper exercise, it's hydration, it's owning your power, it's touching, it's, it's literally being grounded by nature, it's praying, it's being connected above. They, those are the pillars, it's sweating, it, it's, it's balancing, it's stretching, it's doing breath work, qigong, like these are the things that boost your energy field and allow you to stay healthy and, and vibrant and have the longevity. So that's what really, I feel it is. Yeah. And I could see your energy change as you were talking about it. You're like, this is optimal health. This is success. You know, um, all these things, which I absolutely love. Let, let, let's get into today's topic. Let's get started about the juicy, juicy stuff. Um, our power lines, cell phones, microwaves, Wi-Fi routers, computers, all of these appliances send out steam of invisible energy waves, right? Um, electric and magnetic fields, also known as EMFs, which we'll refer to that, are produced anywhere electricity is used, including our home and our workplace. So now what, I know I've sped a little bit, what, what are EMFs? Um, what are they from your point of view, Justin? Well, they're electromagnetic fields or frequencies, and it can be a man-made one, which are one directionals, or it can be from the universe, which is uh, their unpolarized waveforms, like a cosmic shift in the atmosphere would change our REM patterns during our sleep, just as much as having your bed leaning against your wall with, with uh, electricity in the wall. So electricity, it can be measured in electricity, dirty electricity, uh, and then also wireless. You can also throw magnetic resonance in there with electricity as well, but they measure this in waveforms. So the speed of a, the uh, electricity is measured in a wavelength. The speed of that wavelength uh, will condense that wave and make it super fast. So electricity can be measured in, uh, you know, upwards of, I don't know, a few hundred waves per second. Whereas when you get to dirty electricity, you're going to be up into the 50,000s waves per second on up. And then when you get into wireless, it's going to be in the millions of waves per second to billions of waves per second. 
But what's really important, Mihaela, to realize and understand is that our body has its own energy field and we're one with the universe. The universe has an electric blanket around, around surrounding us. And so just as uh, a dolphins, uh, their environment is the ocean. And if you pollute the ocean, you know, that would, they would get sick to try and adapt to that. Well, we would, ours would be the air, which is plasma. And you have waves and particles that travel through that plasma. So it's really a, a waveform resonance that we're looking at and the speed of that wavelength and then understanding the difference between uh, man-made, which is a one directional and what we really rev with, which is unpolarized waves like the sun that distributes equally in every direction. Yeah. So there's, so people think EMFs, they just straight away think bad, but what you've just said is, is that it can be man-made or it could be nature made. Right. So it's not all bad. No, we thrive with it. We wouldn't be here without it. We act like a battery. Our body is a battery. The universe has a battery, positive and negative charge, right? That's how these magnets work. Our body has a positive charge coming from above with this, with the unpolarized waves of the sun. And we have the negative charge coming from the earth and we pull the electrons from it. So our body gets charged with those electrons, with that light from the sun, with that positive and negative charge from above and below. That's how the universe works and we're so one with it. But the challenge is when you start to introduce man-made radiation, like one directional waveforms, the electricity in your home would not work if it would distribute equally in every direction. It has to go in and then it has to go out. So if there's a transformer that's powering 15 homes in your neighborhood, all the signals going into that have to meet all the signals going out of it or else you're going to have lots of static in the line. So this is simple electricity, uh, you know, 101 as far as understanding the waveforms and how it's, it's made. So the speed of it, you know, it categorizes what, where, what category it's in. And then you have meters that measure the wave, the speed of those waves. So you have a milligoss meter for electricity. You have a Stetzer electric meter, S-T-E-T-Z-E-R electric.com, Stetzer electric meter. Uh, it's 125 bucks. You can pay, you plug it in the wall. It measures your amps to the volts. And if there's any static, that should be 50 or below. A milligoss should be one or below. And these are all from bioinitiative.org studies with you know, hundreds of scientists throughout you know, 40 countries. And then you have the wireless signals that should be, you know, one microwatt per meter squared or, or below. And not, not metering out these meters, where, which happens when you point it out a cell phone. So that kind of gives a little intro to it. Yeah. Wow. So essentially you just said that we get a natural one when we are barefoot outside in the morning seeing the sun that's kind of like us recharging our battery that's what i got from that and then us holding our phone and it's 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 not that 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 the emf is the not so good one and then us being outside in the sun barefoot is a good emf is that kind of right for the audience to understand exactly <laughs> yeah brilliant exactly. i love it so look um we can go straight into like studies and things like that, that you said. So studies have found links between EMF exposure and minor health concerns. Cause I guess that's what we're talking about in today's top, in today's topic about health concerns, right? Uh, such as headaches, skin rashes. People wouldn't even think about getting skin rashes from EMFs. Some people might think, okay, they might get a headache and so forth, but skin rashes to even some very, very serious concerns, such as even fertility problems, um, DNA fragmentations, cell damage and cancerous tumors. So what are your thoughts on that about EMFs actually affecting our health on a cell biological level? Well, there's no scratching your head on it that it does because it's so different. And I'll back it up for you. Dr. Martin Paul at a Washington State University discovered that the voltage gated calcium channels open up and it lets positive calcium into a negative cell which in turn causes tremendous DNA and cell damage. So right out of the gates, 
whether it's low level EMF or really high level EMF, the vibration of EMF causes these voltage gated calcium channels open up. So once you have that excess calcium in, you have some cell damage, DNA damage, what happens is, is there's a few different things. First off, your eyes, your teeth, your thymus, upper chest, lower neck, and your small intestine area below your belly button. Those are the four primary areas, Mihaila, that get decharged by EMF. When those lose their polarity, when they lose that negative ionic charge, you become a gateway. And then the first symptoms would be mostly cognitive, focus, energy, sleep, anxiety, fatigue, behavioral challenges, headaches, you know, bloody noses, uh, ringing in the ears, like a lot of that going on. Then the level two would be more severe migraines, you know, more extreme bloody noses, nausea. What you talked about as far as the rashes on the skin, you're going to start to be more of a non-trauma concussion symptoms. And and then you go into the bigs, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, suicide, cardiovascular. And now the biggest one popping up is the lack of fertility because the women's ovaries absorb 10 times the amount of radiation than any other part of the body. And the guy's sperm count just plummets. So those are just directly correlated. Since we've put electricity into our homes, the bell curve of those five bigs, uh, or six uh, for, with fertility, have gone up. And obviously diabetes has taken the cake because of all the fake food. So that's been the biggest one out there. But now EMF is, is really taking a stronghold. We had someone in Newport Beach who lived on one of the most toxic streets. Son in high school, local high school committed suicide. Like this is happening in our backyard and I could drive down the street with a meter and, and quantify those levels and go, this was such high milligoss, like 60 milligoss on the street, which it should be one or below. No wonder these kids, you know, you know, are going through so much turmoil. So there's no scratch in your head when you can, when you can quantify the stuff. And then on top of it, 60 minutes, which uh, which I don't watch TV anymore because I don't buy in all the fear. But a few years ago, they, it was a big segment. They aired uh, at least twice, but it was the Havana cohort. And it was the first attack of U.S. embassy workers on foreign soil in Cuba and China with microwave radiation. And they have been in the hospital for six months with the, the, those same symptoms. So this stuff is, uh, it's really challenging for our body. It's really challenging for the nature. And then definitely for pets. I know you have a beautiful dog, as do I. And these dogs can hear those sounds and our meters that we can show can meter them and hear it as well. Right. Oh, wow. It's absolutely crazy. And even you saying that people are using it as a weapon, you know, and, and, and that we are surrounded with this weapon in our home, in our office, at school. It's just kind of like, ooh, mind-blowing, isn't it? Um, and when you say you're measuring them, what are the three major EMFs that you measure? Um, yeah, what do you and what do you use to measure them? How would you know the EMFs in your office, in your home? And you even said in someone's street. Yeah, so you get a milligoss meter, that'll meter the electricity and then the magnetic resonance too. And then you can get a, a Stetzer electric meter to measure the dirty electricity, just plug it in the wall. And then you could get a, a meter to meter the uh, and measure the uh, wireless signals. So the wireless signals are uh, acoustometer. And so you have those three primary meters can really for they're each about 150 dollars you can you can have something that really quantifies you know all the different levels that that you're seeing in your home yeah that's crazy i can just imagine it, yeah yeah just, just imagine you going around and being like okay we're buying this house okay yes you're going to school here yes i'm working here based on those um results <laughs> yeah and, and right now uh, we just bought a home and there is a transformer out in the front area, in the front yard, like adjacent to the neighboring home. So there's really high dirty electricity. So 
I'm troubleshooting before we move in to get that static down really low. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, affect us, you know, and we have the grounding bags. You can put the grounding bags and convert the waveform. We can live with the stuff and make it healthy. We can transmute it through biogeometry. But my whole thing, it's like, Hey, let's understand, like these are manufacturing errors. Like there's no reason there should be upwards of, you know, 1200, you know, GS units of static electricity in my home. There's no way it should be 50 or below, like in a healthy home. So let's find what those stressors are, troubleshoot it, whether it's the transformers too old and needs more power to, to fuel that home or the rats ate the lines going into it, or it's a wiring in my home, whatever it is, there's a lot of ways we can start to be really aware and troubleshoot this with these great meters. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Love that. Um, so let's, let's talk about what most people want to hear about, right? 5g, right? So it's rolled out. Um, it's so interesting because my phone actually doesn't accept 5g. Um, and that's because I have an, a Huawei phone and they've just um, cut all ties, m- most ties, Australia or China, and they're not allowing Huawei phones in Australia. So I can't access 5g on my phone and Yes, but everyone else around me can access 5G. So what is the difference between 4G, 5G, and 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 what's the impact? Why is there so much things on the internet about it? Why is everyone talking about it? Why is there such a hype about 5G? So in 19, about 96 or 8, there were procedural levels set by our government, which seemed to be taken over and adopted by a lot of others on the, the levels of hey, if it's non-ionizing, it's okay. If it's ionizing, it it creates a thermal effect and it's not okay. Well, those levels have never been changed since now, but the technology has exponentially improved. So we're we're looking right now at at 5G is 60 to 90 billion waves per second. So I like to convert it all into a wave per second because everyone can grasp that versus microwatts per meter squared or all this, you know, mumbo jumbo in the industry. So when we sleep, Mihaila, guess what? We're at one or below one to eight Hertz or waves per second. Correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You're in a theta brainwave state from Mm. four to eight. You're in a Delta, you know, from one or below one to four. So when we're sleeping and resting, restoring, our bodies are one to eight hertz or waves per second. 5G 60 to 90 billion <laughs> waves per second. And then 5G is a one directional waveform that's 10 zeros faster. Like this is, it's crazy. So uh, basically the Schumann resonance of the earth, the healing pulse of the earth is 7.83 hertz or waves per second. 7.83. So as we talked we're one with mother nature we're one with earth we have the positive negative charge we rev at the same pulse of the healing pulse of earth that's why it feels so good to be barefoot and get outside and and put your toes in the sand or in the ocean or in the grass or go lay down and have a picnic on the grass because we're pulling those electrons and mother earth is recharging our bodies now these cell phones are 2.45 billion waves per second, really similar to a smartwatch, earbuds. Uh, then you go up the, the, so that's all about, you know, the 4G level. Uh, the 5G, they're showing 5G enabled. I don't know if they've really rolled out 5G. There's no meter to meter that level. Like literally the meters that we can purchase, they meter out on just my cell phone alone. So they can't measure past 2.45 billion waves per second. So we don't know. We're relying on a telecom industry for our own safety when they're not in the business of safety. Neither is the FCC, by that way. And so we're relying on these industries that don't care about your health and safety. They want connectivity is what they're saying. But uh, the, the irony is, is in poverty-stricken areas, they don't even have electricity. So connecting them with internet or radiation or phased array millimeter waves from satellites, like it won't do a thing except affect their health. So 
this is a that that's the spectrum. So 5G E would be like 30 billion waves per second, you know, not 60 to 90. So they're stepping it up. They're slowly turning up. And, and this is where we get into the kind of the meat of all this stuff. And, and that's where the pollution of our atmosphere is affecting our health. Yeah, you said that so well, the pollution of our atmosphere. And when we understand that we are energy, and like you said at the start, we all have energy around us, like the dolphins have the water around them, we have our water around us, and that's getting polluted, right? Exactly. That is scary, mind-blowing, and that it can cause and affect our health in some traumatic experiences. And some I, I hear I talk to a lot of people and they say, Well, you know, I've I've lived with Wi-Fi, I've lived with electricity all my life, it hasn't affected me. How do you know? You know, how do you know it hasn't affected you? Um, you know, we always have those people who get affected first and they get sick first and and they get cancer first because of their immune system or because of their genetics. And then some people, it takes a bit of time. But the question is, is how long, you know, how long does it take for all this to affect us, for these EMFs to affect us, right? So, yeah, so how, so, you know, humans have been grounding for millions of years exactly what we're talking about taking your shoes off and we've mentioned that a few times i mean i don't know a lot of people that take their shoes off i mean i think someone asked me what's one of probably one of the worst inventions i'm like oh shoes or socks <laughs> because we we should be barefoot right we should be grounding um and connecting with earth's natural frequencies as energies so how does actually grounding or earthing helps us with our EMFs exposure with us being polluted with so much dangerous EMFs. Definitely. Well, there's a book Clint Ober wrote called Earthing, and he talks all about grounding. When you can be ground and keep your polarity and keep your energy field, you're going to have health and you're not going to be in pain and you're going to have deeper sleep. So it's a, it's a most integral fundamental part of how mother nature created us to rev and ever since we added electricity to homes and started putting on shoes and then you know we we we're getting lots of radiation when we're sleeping but then we're not getting grounded from the earth and now they're putting phased array satellites hundreds of thousands of them like we've never radiated our entire globe at this level it, it, it's it's the most incredible uh, feet that, that these industries have created. And, and so as Dr. Mercola would say, you're EMF'd when you're not getting that, those scalar waves, those unpolarized waveforms from above, and then you're not getting the, the negative ionic charge from below. Our bodies will end up breaking down. So mm -hmm. there's a book called The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. And I encourage everyone to find this and read this book. It's one of the most well-referenced book, uh, books out there. Arthur Furstenberg is a phenomenal researcher. And the bibliography is like 150 pages, and this is a thick book. <laughs> so he has categorized all the pandemics in our history and directly correlated them with shifts in our electromagnetic blanket of an, of an atmosphere, whether they're cosmic or man-made. So 1918, the Spanish flu, we introduced radio waves on a global scale. And then Hong Kong flu satellites in the Van Allen belt. Well, we're introducing a lot of satellites now too. So guess what's coming? Then World War II, we introduced radar. On a, on a broad scale. And before that, you know, the, all the, the years before that, hundreds of years, the, you know, any other pandemic would have been attributed to a cosmic shift in the atmosphere. Because uh, there's a gentleman that I've used his system, it's Dr. Darren Weissman. He uses the lifeline technique. He uses infinite love and gratitude as the mechanism to clear any holding patterns, uh, whether they're subconscious holding patterns or whatever the energy you know, diversion is, that's the healing pulse that he uses to clear it with the sign language, with saying it. But in his flow chart to clear you, 
when you get to the spirit, you waves or particles are disrupted. When that flow gets interrupted, the next sequence that goes out are your REM patterns. So when you don't get the REM and you don't get that deeper sort of sleep, then you, you, your water destructures, your hormones imbalance, you have all the, you know, all the things that we introduce, <laughs> you introduced the topic with it as well as I did that end up happening to your body. So it's quite incredible to see that now with this pandemic, there's the rollout of 5G. It's one of the most recent electrifications that at this highest level, the first place to roll it out was Wuhan at a really significant level. And again, we're all resonance. Everything has a waveform. So there's no scratching your head while one area could get sick and all of a sudden the frequency can be, you know, transferred. That's how we can talk. You're in Australia, I'm in California. Like how we can talk across the country just and have an incredible conversation. It's through this waveform. So to me, there's no scratching your head as when those frequencies go out, what happens is, is our bodies in turn attempt to adapt and our adaptive mechanisms are, guess what? Fungus, bacteria, and viruses. Those are adaptive systems. If we didn't have viruses uh, in the tune of 10 to the 31 of them, that's 31 zeros. There's not a name for that number. It's so many. We would not be here today without viruses. They are our adaptive system. And so we produce a virus. It's a dead protein. It doesn't eat, it doesn't reproduce. It's our, what we produce, our cells excrete it. That's our adaptive systems. And the mechanisms of the symptoms of getting colds or flus or what have you, it's our body's way of, of adapting and getting that out of our system. And it's a system upgrade. So we need to be thankful for it. At net net of it, you'll adapt when you need to at the level you're capable. So start taking care of yourself, but there's nothing flying around to kill anyone. Uh, so that's a big thing to understand is, is this waveform, this resonance and the true contagions are the frequencies of that bandwidth that they've messed with the COVID and the, you know, those viruses and tampered with them. And now the, the big contagions are the spike proteins. That's a, that's a poison. That's a, that's a contagion. So we, we, we want to understand science and physics and biology and waveform. And I love kinesiology too, but it's just not taught to the layman. And so let's bring it down into under, everyone can understand it as waveform and waves per second and how the bodies work and why we've been here for a couple hundred million years as a population and survived and thrived and no <laughs> a mask and drugs like are not here to save us <laughs> in this in this era a hundred percent there's so much to draw out of what you just said but going on top of what you said about viruses i agree a hundred percent i mean when you look at kids um you know you got kids yourself is once they have a virus after it they have a growth spurt right they start walking they start talking right and when you think about that, you're like, is a virus so bad? Exactly what you were saying, you know, uh, it's part of us. I, I sometimes say in regards to bacteria, I think I'm only alive to keep bacteria alive, you know, <laughs> like that's the only reason why I'm here. <laughs> I make a joke always. But you're, you know, going back to the frequencies and and, and that book, wow, I'm going to get my hands on that book, um, colorating the differences between the rollout of different frequencies and then the pandemics that came out about it. So my, my family is from Eastern Europe and, you know, the war and things like that have been around there and everyone was so healthy. And then after the war in the 90s that happened in, 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 in Yugoslavia, everyone got sick cancer all of a sudden came out, um, um, you know, a dementia came out and so many other things started coming. And it's like, people always say that live there is like that war, the effects of it made it sick of, of the toxins um, of those things that came out of it, you know? Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So, so some, you've mentioned some items, right. Um, that, you know, we should probably stay away from while they're affecting us, like wireless earbuds, um, electric cars, right, which is the future, okay? 
um, solar panels even, right? Um, are there are there any others that are affecting us? Um, and, you know, electric cars, are they floating EMF vehicles? Like, you know, everyone seems to be on top of them, but are they actually dangerous for us? Like, what's your thoughts, Justin? Definitely. I mean, these Teslas are cooking families. It's really scary because you're sitting on a big ass battery. I mean, the thing's giant. There's several. There's like, it's so big. I can't sit in one because I feel my, I ache. My body aches. My private party aches. Like it's not good when for someone like me who works with athletes, uh, uh, just most of my career and can read energy and does muscle testing, applied kinesiology, can feel energy, uh, uh, has a heightened intuition. It's, it's not healthy for us at all to sit on a, that strong of a battery. And then the whole front dashboard on every new car is all milligoss. It's all electric. And then, especially with these self-driving cars, like a Tesla per se, they're all millimeter waves, like all around it. So you have all three at the highest level and in the closest proximity. So it's a recipe for lack of fertility and, and breaking down your health. One of my colleagues who was just working with athletes got hired by the military to test special forces and do blood analysis. He threw in a marker without any predisposition to it of guys driving electric cars, read the blood, the guys that drove electric cars, 18% lower testosterone. So that's one of the reasons I, we, we chatted beforehand on it. And so then you add a doctor that I'm working with, she's tested an MD doctor, has tested all of her patients before and after blood works. The patients that uh, had received uh, the latest shot, their blood dropped in their testosterone dropped 20%. So if you have a person that was healthy, a thousand to 1200 testosterone, healthy male per se, they ended up driving an electric car. Let's say they're at a thousand. They end up driving an electric car. Then they get the shot. They're down in 600. You're going to have prostate, bone, cardiovascular, like all the other markers, this trickle down effect on the body is significant. I mean, you're a naturopath. You, you know exactly what happens when testosterone gets offline. And so this is what we're seeing with, with EMF. So yeah, the, the Teslas are, are super challenging. Oh, I'll, I'll stop there, but I have more to share. <laughs> no, no, don't stop. Keep talking about it. I, I love it. And uh, someone that's listening may be like, okay, well, I have I maybe drive a Tesla. I have wireless earbuds. I have a smartwatch. Um, what else? Uh, you know, I, I, I have solar panels in my home. Um, I have all these things. I have wireless, this, wireless, that. And they're like, ooh, okay that's all affecting my health. It's all affecting your health. There's a buzz to it that you can hear subtly. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's, and, and our pets can hear it. It's, it's really loud when you're sitting in the room and all of a sudden the, all the electricity goes out, the buzz goes, and then it's silent. I mean, that's when you can really know that there's a vibration going on, but Definitely solar panels. Solar is not the end of sale. Electric cars is not going to save our environment at all, period. We've been lied to by industries. It's not clean energy. It's not net zero. They're making these batteries with coal. They're mining cadmium. They're mining special minerals to put in these that require extensive fossil fuel and, and exhaust to mine them then we have to power them with electricity that uses those as well. The amount of wattage in a cell tower to run that is extensive and it's 24 seven. There's no governors on these things. They don't quiet down. There's no sleep mode on a cell tower. They're always on radiating yeah, 60 to 90 billion waves per, per second. It, potentially that's what they're claiming to be able to do. So, we're looking at things the wrong way. Solar panels on a home, they're collecting energy to give you the output that you're re requesting at that moment. That's gonna cause lots of static in the line. How can you have that without, it's like, you're gonna want this. Oh wait, I'm just gonna give you this little bit right here. 
right here, right here. There's got to be static and it's storing it. So to store that stuff, it's going to be lots of static electricity in your home and, and in your life. So we, we got to really relook at electricity as the end all say all because it's not. And when these batteries run out, which they do, they have lifespans. We're filling up our landfills with acid, you know, and dead batteries. And it's just not a net zero. And the worst part about it is it affects our health and our mm. family's health. Mm. So that's the biggest challenge. So just like, just imagine people listening and being like, okay, so EMFs are bad, electricity and so forth. So how do we live the modern life that we want to live or are addicted to and not be exposed by these things? Like, what do we do? Well, wrap ourselves cool with thing, aluminium? <laughs> no, the, the cool <laughs> thing is, Mahela, is, is, uh, is we can convert a waveform. So we can convert this wave. There's nothing to fear. As much of this has been about a lot of the challenges of it, and everyone breaks down at different levels. Obviously, younger and older, the, a fetus doesn't have a, a skull or a blood-brain barrier. They don't have any protection. So 24 to, to about 50 will be the most resilient, obviously, uh, age-wise. And then after you start, your, your light, your energy fields in your body starts to you know, shift. So you're going to be more susceptible to breaking down. But the cool thing is, is especially mother nature designed it so you can get grounded by nature. Okay. She gave us these innate healing properties. So we can coexist with man-made EMF. We can use these grounding bags to transmute or, or convert that waveform from a one directional to something that's beneficial for us. It's physics. So I first got scared. I would go in and meet her homes and offices. I got the crap scared out of me more than anything. I went to an office and I got, literally got a headache within 10 seconds of walking above on the parking structure above it because they had a faux, like fake walls, faux walls with cell towers all in it. And it was the strongest thing I've ever felt in my life. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we're toast. Like we're toast. And I had to get emotional, clear it, clear it. But what I realized is that we can convert this waveform. So I will share that so you don't fear this stuff. We can convert this waveform and have it so that it en ends up being a healthy waveform. I know doctors that are treating patients through their cell phone because cell phone, the millimeter waves are so fast, they can use light therapy with the grounding bags, you know, and, and have it expedite their, their uh, treatment. So we can convert this stuff. There's nothing to fear. We just need to understand that it's a man manufacturing, you know, to make sure it's manufactured properly, make sure you understand proximity awareness, of the different stressors. And I'll, I'll, I want to talk about smart meters as well. Uh, that's another one we missed, but, but those are the things that you want to understand and then how to convert that waveform by doing your own work, by staying grounded by nature, outside of nature, barefoot, getting in the ocean and such. And then also uh, using your grounding bags at home to protect you and your family. And then you have like on the go protection, with the, where the many grounding bags. Okay, so before we get into how this works and what crystals are in it, um, or if they even are crystals, so you can go into a bit of detail, smart meters, right? I have an interesting story about smart meters. Um, I was in in bedroom in my old, old home and I read all this stuff, spoke to a few people about it, and they're like, oh, don't sleep near your smart meter. Okay, cool. I didn't even know where my smart meter was. I went outside, literally my headboard smart meter right there what i did no. is the whole day i took the whole day changed around the whole bed um did a few other things plugged everything out turned off all the switches um and sleep changed like you it was yeah it was crazy headaches went um 
I felt more vibrated in the morning because uh, I was getting just lethargic and having waking up with headaches and things like that. I didn't think it was anything. I was like, maybe I'm not drinking enough water and all these things. But yes, smart meters tell us, Justin. <laughs> well, I had a client, so I had gone to meet her home. So I had a client that they there's friend back units in Corona Del Mar, and their child's bedroom was literally there were two smart meters one to meter the back unit one to meter the front unit and the head of one of their kids beds was right under it as you described she grinded her teeth to nothing like grinded they're down to nothing super scary the other ones had some seizure challenges like everyone had health challenges the mom's going what the heck we eat organic we're the healthiest da, da, da. and all that. So the smart meters, they're, they're a two-way router, basically, that act like a cell tower on your home and polarize your home. They read into the units and then take that reading and then ping it back to the substation for your electric company every seven to 15 seconds. So that sporadic pulse is really disruptive for our bodies. And again, 2.45 billion waves per second. So Josh Del Sol, one of my friends, did a Take Back Your Power documentary movie. Fantastic. Recommend everyone watch it. He foresaw everything that's going on right now. It's an unbelievable documentary movie. But it was all on smart meters. And so they finally turned him down enough to like not ruin people like, like instantly. So it's more of a slow cook process. But you definitely want to reposition your beds and keep them away from that. You can use shielding properties to deflect the waveform a different direction, which I I recommend when there's something of that close of proximity that's always on. Uh, here in the US, we can, in most of the states, we can opt out of a smart meter. We can say, hey, I wanna opt out of it, convert it back to analog. You just pay 75 bucks, a one-time fee and an extra 10 bucks a month. And, and they'll send a guy out to meter it versus you know the the wireless you know basically they've they've saved thousands of jobs so they've made more money they've cut jobs and uh they're playing tricks i mean i i had one on our last house that i owned we i had them convert it and they switched it back to to uh to smart meter and, and i'm going you guys who switched this and they're like we don't switch it they were still billing me more but they switched it back and I have a meter. I'm like, you can't fool me. <laughs> like this is, this is my world. And I got the guy that got the head guy out there. He's like, I don't know. We had a work or he's like, I'm pissed. Cause I had to fire a thousand workers. So those were my friends. And, and, and so anyhow, the smart meters are a big, big topic and definitely make sure you can put shielding paint or tin or something. We can use the Faraday bags. If you want something really inexpensive, you just put a Faraday bag or eight by eight one uh, on the uh, opposite side and that'll reflect it out. And I've done that uh, as well. And you Tell can us a bit more up. about those bags. Tell us a bit more about those bags that you're- Oh, the Faraday bags. Well, the Faraday bags are awesome. You guys will absolutely love them. I mean, some people are just obsessed with them. You put your phone in and it just quiets that noise of the phone right away. So we have a, a one half the size of the 8x8 and just a more mobile, you know, Faraday bag. But you put your phone in it and it quiets the noise of the phone. Waveforms will still go through. So... The phone may or may not ring. Most of the phones ring. This is a seven milliliter Faraday bag, like a military grade Faraday bag. It's a static bag. So can you believe that a, a phone can actually get through that? That's how strong these cell companies are making the phones. So we definitely don't want that absorption rating to, to be anywhere close to you at all. So if they can go through that, they can penetrate a lot. And but the phones, what they do is, they're the Faraday bags, they protect you from your phone and they pr protect your phone from data harvesting. And that's one of the biggest things right now for our freedoms. I mean, yeah, they're mandating all these, you know, challenging measures for, for us. Uh, but, but the biggest part probably, I feel way more than a mandating a vaccine is 
is our privacy and, uh, of our data. Your retina, your fingerprint, all your banking information. I mean, they know your gait, your sleep, how fast you drive. All these markers are tracked by every single app company and even your bank. So I've done what you've done really and got an Android phone, wiped it clean. I don't have any tracking capability on it. We're, I'm going and getting SIM cards and burner phones and literally putting names in different you know, accounts and different numbers becoming invisible. So you need two Faraday bags. You need to double up, put this phone inside here and then put it inside the big one and your location will not show up on the map. Your phone will not be read. So no more contact tracing. So it's really important that we stop this data harvesting uh, and, and a lot of it's coming from CCP. I mean, our own governments are doing it in every country, but uh, if, if China were to get a hold of all this information and aggregate it, which they already have, they are in dominion and our voting you know, uh, software, they have all of our driving capabilities, you know, and you know, if you're driving a foreign car, every phone, every TV, they're all made over there. So they're aggregating all this information and then obviously the phones are made from there. They're pulling it. You know, TikTok's been the most notorious for pulling and, and data harvesting, but it's happening across the board in all these. So I can only fathom that in 16, 15 years when they aggregate this stuff, they could take over countries without one bullet being fired. So for me, the data harvesting is, is probably one of the biggest uh, challenges for, for us. And, and these Faraday bags are a huge solution for you. So is there a Faraday bag that we can go in? <laughs> well, the grounding bag, because we can convert it. We don't need to live in a bag. We can live. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So what's in those grounding bags, Justin? The grounding bags, we have found a really special place on the earth and we hand mine crystals. They have moisture and magnetic properties inside them. So the shungites, the amethysts, the black tourmalines, they've all been famous for having magnetic properties. They're Tesla crystals. They carry a frequency that can be measured by meters. And so what these do is we have a moisture content in them as well. So the combination between the moisture content and the magnetic properties make them just exponentially more powerful for repelling EMF than all the others out there that are famous for it. So that's what we've done is we've hand mined crystals. We put them inside of one of the static bags so they stay ground and they stay because you have to keep them sealed. Something really wild is when you put good in here, it shows through. So the grounding bags will show through, the frequency will, will show through. But when I put my cell phone in it, it quiets the cell phone down to safe level. So if I put a meter, it would be screaming meter out. We put it in here, it goes to safe levels. So it's something that's just really uh, interesting how the physics works in these Faraday bags. And so with the grounding bag, we put the crystals in it. Then we put an outer decorative cloth. We keep it all sealed. We double seal it. So it's in an inner bag and then the silver static bag and then the cloth and you literally use it as is, put it on or under your bed, at the head of your bed, put it on or under your desk or your car seat. And those are sources, those are the three sources that you wanna clear directly. And then from there, you do five grounding bags per 2000 square feet. So you wanna put compile in addition to that one on or under your bed, five together. The more bags together, the more frequency and magnetic resonance that it kicks off to convert a waveform. So if it's a cell tower, you're trying to clear, you're gonna need a dozen bags or so. If it's solar on your home, you're gonna need seven. The average home, we recommend five grounding bags per 2000 square feet and one on, on or under each bed. If it's a Tesla or electric car with a big battery, you're gonna need at least five to seven and you can put them right behind the driver's seat to clear that, that that uh, EMF. Wow. That's absolutely crazy. I love how mother nature has provided us with the solution. Like it always does. I absolutely love that. Um, look, we're coming to the end of the podcast, Justin, appreciate your time so, so much. 
In regards to some practical tips for the audience to reduce the EMF exposure, clearly having those grounding bags and uh, taking them in their home as per your recommendations. And also for the phone, the Faraday bags, um, the Faraday bags. Is there anything else that individuals can do? Some practical tips, one, two or three that you can provide um, to reduce the EMF exposure? Yeah, really, first off, understand that everything electric has a resonance. So start to identify the the sources and then have better proximity awareness. Then grab a meter. So purchase some meters to quantify that level so you can kind of understand what you're dealing with and make sure they're healthy levels, get an electrician and they're rewired and regrounded. And then third, get grounded by nature. I mean, literally go outside, touch a tree, feel that resonance from it. Get your feet in the grass and the sand and the ocean, jump in the water. You're gonna really feel that that resonance from that and you're going to feel really healthy get grounded by nature with our grounding bags make sure you're traveling with them have the mini in your pocket so there are phones on the outside of it and it's a there's a buffer a layer of protection between your body you know and the phone uh dr tom cowan he's an md he wrote the contagion myth he was one of the uh, video that went, went viral at the beginning of last year when all went was started and he basically was famous for saying that hey when you pollute the water the dolphins get sick you know it, it's it's uh that's you know the the challenge there well he actually tells a story on a podcast that i did with him on his on his podcast uh, that uh, he had a patient that's an electrician and uh, the guy was a surfer. So he wasn't really affected by the EMF because he was grounding so much. But then he got injured. He had a plate put in his arm. He wasn't surfing. He was still working with one hand. So he was getting this electricity. And now he was even a more of a conductor, started getting really sick. And so this was an actual clinical patient of Dr. Cowan's that he referenced in our podcast. So it's really important to, to get grounded by nature so we can keep that life force up. Yeah, jump in the water, take your shoes off, be outside in the sun, don't be scared of it. There's so much that you can do, you're so right. And that's such an interesting point. And then we can even go on and talk about like medical procedures when when metal or things are put inside of us. Oh my gosh, like... <laughs> um, but no, I appreciate your time on today's podcast you shared some valuable information i'm going to provide the link to your website emf um, rocks.com um, and also individuals to access your products and also um, the books that you've shared with us down on the notes so i really 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 do appreciate your time so much justin today thank you for joining us on the natural health podcast thank you mihaila appreciate you Thank you for joining us at the Natural Podcast. And remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. The content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a certain Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet, lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.